Welcome to our CA Football 12 Teams in 12 Days Season Preview. Today, we take a look at the Richmond Spiders, and nobody better to help us with that than the longtime play-by-play -play voice of the Spiders, Bob Black. Bob, thanks for joining us. Rob, enjoy it. Thanks for having us. Ready to talk some football. Ready to kick it off. Yeah, it's not far down the road. I think the spring season for all of us, it, was, it went differently for different teams, but Richmond seemed to be one of the teams that really benefited from that. A 3-1 and one record, finished 14th nationally, and really showed a lot of potential while playing a lot of different guys. What do you think the Spiders got out of the spring? Well, the one thing I heard, uh, Rob, from almost every player was, thank goodness we played in the spring. No matter what the record was, no matter what the stat sheet shows, they just wanted to play. It would have been an internally long period of time if they hadn't played games in the spring. I know Towson didn't, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how the Towson guys react. But for the rest of us that played spring games, I think it was it was really helpful to get everybody out on the field and play competitive football games. And yeah, it was great that, that we went 3-1 and one and were nationally ranked and just missed the playoffs. I just think the mere fact that we played and then to follow that up, everybody that played in the spring is back in the fall. I think it was a, a huge help, particularly for this team that is, as you kind of referenced, loaded with fourth and fifth year seniors and even a half dozen of what we're calling, I guess, super seniors, the sixth year seniors. Let's start with a look at the offense. I, I, there's a deep and talented offensive line, certainly, that they can build around some skill players at running back and receiver. And then maybe most importantly, one of those six-year super seniors at quarterback in Joe Mancuso. Yeah, he'll, he'll be the leader of the offense. Uh, he knows it like the back of his hand, obviously, and his voice is well known in the huddle to the rest of the guys. So I think that is huge. But the group that you started with first, I think is the one that may eventually be the most important. That's the offensive line. And this is about, Rob, as you said, I've been here a long time. This is about as deep and as talented as I can remember an offensive line. I think there's probably 15 total offensive linemen and probably nine or 10 that the coaches feel really confident about putting in a game at any point. Um, every offensive lineman is back. They took every snap in the spring and they're back for the fall. So I think it starts with the offensive line and protecting Joe Mancuso and then blocking for the running backs. Um, and I do think those two positions, Rob, are the two that might tell the tale of this team this season. I think they were looking to add some depth and talent at wide receiver. They took another transfer from East Carolina. We already had one in Leroy Henley. We've added another in Jonathan Johnson, who should be a speed guy and can go over the top. So wide receiver will be an interesting position to watch and running back will be interesting. I think we're three deep at the moment with uh, Aaron Dyke, Savon Smith, Dante Black, who didn't get a chance to play in the spring because of injury. The one key loss, Rob, is Mylon Howard, who will not play in the spring. Uh, he's out with a uh, with a knee injury. Unfortunately, didn't play in the spring and won't play again in the fall. Let's switch over to the defensive side of the ball. That unit was uh, allowed less than 300 yards a game in the, in the shortened spring season. And it starts with three of the premier players in the conference, Kobe Turner, who was the co-defensive player of the year in the spring, and then and, and Tristan Wheeler and Tyler Dressel are two of the top linebackers in the nation. Yeah, I think they feel really good about the front seven, uh, the four down linemen, and then the three linebackers feeling really good about those two groups. Obviously, Tristan Wheeler is going to get a lot of attention and a lot of publicity. So is Kobe Turner, as you alluded to, but I think they feel good about um, another of those veteran seniors and Tyler Dressler, Xavier Marshall was back at linebacker, Philip O'Connor, who was injured, will be back. So I think they feel deep there and they should get Colby Ritten back on that defensive line to join Darius Reynolds and Caleb Brooks and Turner and uh, Aiden Murray and Ray Eldridge as well. So I think they feel great about those front seven. The secondary, they've tweaked a little bit, Rob, and I'm really interested to watch A.J. Smith, who is our transfer from VMI, and we know what kind of year VMI had in the spring, and A.J. was a, a two-time All-Southern Conference defensive back, so I think he's gonna get an opportunity at safety, which will really bolster the secondary. On special teams, Jake Larson now uh, returns for his third year uh, doing the kicking duties, and then and Aaron Dykes, you touched on him at running back, but he's also been a very dynamic guy in the return game. Yeah, obviously he returned the two touchdowns two falls ago now, I guess, against Delaware. Um, so he'll certainly get an opportunity to return kicks for us. And uh, you mentioned Jake Larson. So he's back really, really solid uh, kicker. I think this league has a lot of good kickers and he's 
he's one of them. And then I think the intriguing one, Rob, will be a punter. Um, Andrew Lopez will return, but they have recruited a young man from Australia. Uh, and a couple of other teams have had some success with the Australian uh, football style punters. I know uh, James Madison certainly did. So we're taking a shot at that. Aaron Trussler comes to us from Australia, had an opportunity to meet him and talk to him over the summer. You're just going to love listening to him and his Australian accent more than anything, but it will be intriguing to watch him uh, with that rugby style punting as well. Well, in the preseason poll, the Spiders picked fourth for, and uh, with all the experience uh, that, that they have back, certainly expectations are high. Give us some keys to what you think it'll take for the Spiders to have a successful season and maybe a return to the playoffs. Yeah, I think um, defense needs to play the way we think they can play. And offensively, we just need to see what we can get out of the wide receiver and running back position. We've got some guys there that have done it to this point, but I think they're going to have to step up even a little bit more, maybe be a little bit deeper uh, in order to catch passes and run the ball and have Joe Mancusa kind of kind of run that offense and then truthfully Rob the schedule didn't do us any favors by by your preseason poll you know of the top five teams we're playing all four of them and I think it's great that Richmond is fourth the experience has a lot to do with that uh, and we'll get Delaware at home we'll get James Madison at home but then we'll have to go on the road to play Villanova and New Hampshire so the schedule schedule maker if that was you Rob didn't do us any <laughs> didn't do us any real favor so it it's always a challenge obviously in the CAA. So I, I think they feel pretty good about the number four preseason um, ranking. Now they got to go out and do it on the field. All right, Bob, thanks so much for taking time with us. And we look forward to talking to you during the season. Ready to kick it off, Rob. Thanks. All right. Thank you.